Welcome to the Canva Classroom, everybody. Today's tutorial is how to create a border around your design. This will be particularly useful for those that are making thumbnails that want to create a cohesive border look. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the tutorial for an announcement. Let's get started. We're going to go over five different borders in today's tutorial, including a page turner border. Let's talk rectangle border. Basically, all you need to do is add an image. It doesn't matter what the image is, so I'm just going to grab one here from Photos. Right click, Set Images Background. Go to Elements. You go to Lines and Shapes. See All. You are going to choose this one. This one is called Square Border, and I highly recommend you star it. It is going to choose a color for you, but you will take it to the edge here and stretch it out widthwise and heightwise to match your image. If you want to change the color, all you have to do is click it, click the color panel, and you can change it to anything you want. There are photo colors here that would really match the photo well. Now on desktop, if you're in Chrome or Edge, then you can pick a color from the design and choose something like that. That is border one. It is by far the easiest type of border to add. Border two is a little more complicated. The first thing is a color. You want a plain color in the background. The second thing I did was look up paper texture and then I clicked photos so I'm going to go ahead and go to my star folders I chose this one it's called crumpled paper texture right click replace background now I know what you're thinking why did the color matter it's because you're going to click on your background go up here to transparency and I'm going to do 48 that gives the paper some kind of color. Now, if I change it to the blue, it would be blue. The green, it would be green, pink. So whatever, it will give it that hint of color. Yellow even, all. Here we go. And basically, we're just going to shrink our grid to the size we want. And some people really like a border look like this where there's only top and bottom. Some people really like to have a border on all four sides. This gives you a thicker border. It is thicker than the one up here. And you can really customize it to the size you would like. You can grab any photo you want. And why don't I just grab this one and take it in there. And now I can go and change my back color. I'm just going to grab a color here. Oh, I don't like that. But do you see, I can just change the way it looks by grabbing different colors. Border number three is just like the first one, except for it's got a plain back background and this this is called a page border so go to elements type in page border and i will show you it looks like this and then you can change the colors so for this one actually let me just do one for you so you see plain color let's change the color to that and Remember before we use the grid, I'm going to use the same technique here. Now you do not have to use a grid. You could just, you could just use the, the image, but this way you can swap out pictures. Just trying different things here. And now we go back to elements, type in page border. Here it is, and 
you have decisions to make. Do you want it right there on the edge of your image or would you prefer it to go to the top like that? You can also adjust the size to make it smaller or larger. It would be pretty large if you wanted it to be on the outside of your line, but then you can change your colors. If you want your colors to be different, make them all different. If you want them to be the same, then make them the same. There's one that kind of gives it an illusion that part of the page is right off. Now, for this one, I didn't make it as large as I made this one. It is really, really versatile. That one goes all the way up in the corner like this. That means that this, to meet the corners, would need to go up like that. And you just keep adjusting your image until you get it right. Now, if you would like something like this on the opposite corner, then duplicate it. Take it over here to your corner and flip horizontally and vertically. There you have it. Next up, border four. I'm thinking you know what's happening here, but just in case you don't, I found a gradient image. I went to photos and I found one that I liked, but we can use any one that we want. So this one's different than the one I used up there. I used this. This is called color gradient. So it would look like this by itself, but to create a different look, I'm gonna go with this one, which is called color gradient. It's another color gradient that's from Pexels. Now, I'm gonna show you what it would look like if you just used an image and didn't upload a grid. I've been looking up Fairy for today's tutorial. And you would basically just place the image where you would like it and then resize it so that it creates a border on the outside of the image. And then of course, position center, middle. Could you make this even fancier? You could, you could actually put a grid on top. I did not do this above. And then some do some sort of texture and go to photos. We'll do this and see what this looks like when I give it a transparency. And let's try that. When you add a transparency to the grid, it stays for the whole grid. And you could even send this backwards so that your back one has a texture, but your front image does not. And I really like the look of that. Finally, we've reached border five. Border five combines a couple different things here. Border five has a plain background. We do the thing with the grid. Let's add a fairy pick. Here's the one that I added before. You will see the size is slightly different. So let me position middle. And I'm going to double click and bring this up so that you can see the fairies better. And let's make sure it's positioned right. It is. We're going to X this out and look at lines and shapes. And scroll down until you see this one. This one is called square frame and then you will adjust the size to match your image. I'm actually going to take it up a little bit more. For this one, I'm going to click the color, go to document colors, the pick a color from the design, and I chose yellow for it. How did I do the page turn? Great question. The first thing I did was look at frames and I went down here and I grabbed this right 
frame. Now, if you click the three dots, it says black right triangle frame. You can start the frame itself, but it actually only stars as a black triangle and you can't add an image in it later. So you need to know where to find it for future things. So we're going to take this and rotate it so that it is 90 degrees and put it up here in the corner. I'm actually going to shrink it so that it is smaller. And I typed in star. Let's look at photo. And it really, I just, you can choose anything you want. You can just play around with it until you get it the way you like it. Page turn. Graphics. Here it is, this very top one. It is a pro image. So you do need Canva Pro for this feature. We're gonna rotate it around 180 degrees there. And we're gonna take this and stretch it out the same size. And there you have it, the page turn with the border. And these are some great options. Which one's your favorite? All right, well, oh, I said there was a huge announcement, didn't I? December has gotten really, really busy for me. I don't know why I thought it wouldn't. I think 2020's lack of busyness caused me forget what the season does in terms of how busy I get with going this place, that place, and the other. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to scrap my whole plan for December. The bottom line is... If you don't want to miss anything, make sure that you're subscribed, turn on all of your notification bells, and if you see that a video is coming up, then make sure you hit the reminder for it. All right, well, that's all I've got for today. If you like this tutorial and want to see more like it, be sure to click all the buttons and comment, and I'll see you next time. Bye.